micrometers for the hobby machinist. Okay, you decided you're going to get a lathe or a mill and machine set up a garage workshop. Uh, we're going to discuss some of the basic tools you'll need and should have. Um, and I'll give you a quick how to use them, how to care and maintain them. Uh, zero to one mics, okay, is probably, if you're getting a little hobby lathe, this is probably one tool you should have, okay. You could use dial calipers, but the micrometers for lathe work, measuring diameters, is the most accurate uh, tool to use. And they're not, they're not quite expensive. This was a Starrett, this old Starrett's top of the line micrometer zero to one. Um, they put carbide faces on them now. This is a very old one. And this one uh, came with the tents. Let's see if I can zoom in on the back of the barrel. This one will measure in ten thousandths. That's four decimal points. And it has a ratcheting thimble on the end. Now in the old Starrett catalog, and it has a lock here. This were so you can put this on, twist this, and it locks the uh, I never really use them. This does have a yeah, this will tighten up and then it locks it so you can measure your part twist this, lock it, then pull it off, and then get your reading here. Um, the old stair catalogs had all kinds of different mics. I'm just going to stick with the outside zero to ones and you know in that range which we use. There are blade mics, uh, disc mics, uh, micrometers with a, a ball bearing on the anvil which you'd use to measure like tubing and pipe. So there's a lot of specialty tools, but for, for the hobby machinist, the home machinist, you need the basic tool. Uh, they come in different sizes. This is a half inch mic. It measures zero to point five hundred thousandths. And again, it's another deluxe Starrett. I seen one of these years ago and the opportunity come to buy it. And in the 20 years I've had it, I think I used it once. Uh, Reads in ten thousandths, has a thimble, has a lock. Now you can find the older mics. I have a good example here, this one to tooth. This is your basic Starrett micrometer. And if you went the old catalogs, you know, all of this was an option. It does not have the lock, the little ring to lock here. Uh, it does not have the uh, tents reading on the back, and it doesn't have a thimble, a ratcheting thimble. It just has a straight thimble. This is your basic Starrett uh, micrometer. And all of those other features were added on an extra. In other words, you could, you know, Starrett had an extensive catalog years ago. You could get a ratcheting thimble without the ten thousandths uh, marks on the back, without a lock, you know. And basically now, all the micrometers I see, unless you buy old used ones, but all your generic ones come with a thimble, reading ten thousandths. You can get them without that on there. Um, and it all kind of depends on how close um, the parts are you're going to make, how accurate you have to measure them, and you know if you want to spend, I guess the like in a set, like this set here of uh, three micrometer, you can also get them in a set. This set covers zero to one. 1 to 2 and 2 to 3. Uh, this set here is basic Chinese made set uh, with, like I said, the features of this has a different style lock on there instead of that Starrett style. 
This has a lever lock. You push this lever and it locks the uh, shaft. You can read ten thousandths with it and it has you know a ratcheting thimble on the end. Now if you get a set like this, I just looked them up, uh, without the ten thousandths indications on the back in here, they're forty dollars and with that feature they're fifty dollars. That's basically your generic form made set. Um, I went on eBay and I was amazed. I mean, years ago, this start would cost you $90. And that's back when I took $110 home a week. Okay? I can buy a used one like this probably for 20 or 15 bucks on eBay. You know, I bought this set back in the 90s when all this stuff started coming in from the foreign countries. And I know I, I paid more than $50 for it. But this set here is going to be my home use set. I had it in my toolbox. And this one, too, is a little unusual. I didn't even notice it until the other day when I was fooling around with it. Um, I have to get in close. It does read your... Uh, Ten thousands, but if you look at the thimble here, there's like long and short marks. There are half thousands marks. There's supposed to be five marks between the numbers, like zero and twenty, but there's ten. So those are half thousands, and that's why that barrel only goes up to five. So it's pretty interesting, a little unusual. I I haven't used them. It's so where it kind of confused me, so these are going to stay home now, and my older ones are going to go in my toolbox. Okay, and another thing is, at one time, being a machinist, you had to have all your own tools, okay, like your micrometers, zero to three or something like this, you were supposed to supply, calipers you were supposed to have, indicators, drive indicators, test indicators, you, you had to have all that equipment. Uh, in order to get a job. Now, a lot of companies, they don't require the operators, I can't really call them machinists, to uh, have their own tools. So a lot of these things have been lying around. This one to two, I bought this over 30 years ago. Uh, used. You used to find them in pawn shops and that, or gun shops. Guys would retire or grab one of these out of work and I think I paid like ten or fifteen dollars for this. This was like a, like I said, a ninety hundred dollar item at the time to buy this. Um, you used to be able to find used tools. Now I guess eBay is a place to go. Uh, machinists aren't really required to have their own hand tools anymore, so uh, I guess you find a lot of them. And a lot of the used stuff on eBay is this older stuff like this. They have some brand names. Uh, Michitoyus, Sterrits, Fowlers, and the used tools aren't priced much more than the uh, brand new foreign ones. You can get a zero to one foreign one with all the bells and whistles for 15 bucks, free shipping. So you're going to need a micrometer. So a zero to one or a little set. Your good to zero to three, you're covered. Now I guess that's because nowadays everybody wants digital or digital readout mics. And I got a set here. This is unusual. What it is, it's a standard set of mics and a digital end down in here is metric. So this will read inches as a normal set of micrometers and give you a digital readout in metric. All right, now caring for your mics and cleaning them. Generally, you shouldn't have to adjust them. The nice thing about the sets is you get a standard. What a standard is, is with the larger mics, they give you something. This is standard here, one inch 
and there's a two inch. This is precision hard ground and is certified that this is exactly two inches and this is one inch. That's how you would check your micrometers to see if your accuracy is on or not. Also with the zero to ones you always want to store your micrometers you don't want to run them closed a hundred percent. You always want to leave a small gap, 10 thousandths, 20. Never leave them with the two faces in contact and then store them because they can get stuck together. All right, and like I said, generally you shouldn't have to adjust the, the micrometers, but like this here, let's, and I have to get away here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. How you hold them? You basically hold them like this, put your pinky through there, and then you turn the, the thimble like this. You're supposed to use the ratcheting one, and you turn that, and then that way it's kind of feel. See, it, this doesn't click. And it's showing me it's about a half thousand off the face. What that is, it's probably got dirt or grime on it. So what you do is you back off the uh, micrometer, you take a sheet of plain white paper, slide it in between the faces, gently roll that down until you make contact, and then back it off to where you just drag the paper across the faces, and then now we cleaned it and we're right on at zero when I close the jaws. Okay, that's how you clean the faces of your micrometer. If you have a larger one, like a two inch or something, you just take it, take the white sheet of paper, and just with your finger, rub the faces of the... Uh, Mike, and we're going to take this one. See, now this one you got to hold two fingers on there, and there is no ratchet. So we're going to run the standard on this and see where we're at. Alright, sorry for the delay, I wasn't quite prepared. Right at zero. So I'm right there. They're good. Um, also, if, you know, another thing, the only way you can damage these is if you drop them or try to force them and then, you know, damage the threads internally by over tightening. That's why it's good to have that little ratchet thing on the back. You know, if, if you don't gauge it right, you can damage the internal threads. And also, say you got your micrometer run all the way out, and you want to get it close. You measured something that was, say, three quarters of an inch, and it's way open, and then you got to get down to a quarter inch, get it close. You know, you don't want to grab this and swing the mic or do anything like that. The way you rapidly close a micrometer is you just... Hold on to it, run it up your arm or your sleeve, and that's probably the proper way to close it quick or move it without damaging it. So that's my basic thing on uh, micrometers. I strongly suggest you get at least a zero to one. You know, I said the sets are nice, about 50 bucks. Uh, but it depends. It depends on what you're going to do. So that's my little hobby machining micrometer uh, video.